Hi guys! In our latest video we did talk about what HTML is and today we're gonna get practical. Okay? So let's start by creating and writing HTML files. Are you ready? Let's get going. I will create a folder first to get organized and then in this folder I will right click and click on new and then text document. I will name it myfile.html and that is how you create an HTML file. There is a pop-up saying do you know what you're doing? And of course we know what we're doing. Of course we know. We understand what we're doing. You click yes and there you have your HTML file. So if you are unable to change the extension um, you would need to go to Options, File Options, and then View, and uncheck the Hide Extension for Known File Types option, okay? Then you will be able to change the extensions. For Mac users, you, you won't be able to do the same thing, but please follow me to VS Code later, and we're fine. So if you want to edit this file right now, we can, but with Notepad. Let me right click and open with Notepad. And as you can see, it's not really friendly. So if we do this, we won't be able to continue our journey. So we need a code editor. And a great choice for that is VS Code. Just search for VS Code on Google and then click on download and here just click on Windows if you have a Windows machine or Mac for Mac machine and once downloaded you can install VS Code I already have it installed here so I will open it up now to edit our file in VS Code we just need to drag and drop the file in VS Code or click on open file and then open it from there here we have our HTML. The better way to do it, I would suggest to drag and drop the folder itself. Okay? If we do that, we will be able to create a new file and then save it with Control S or Command S. We will be able to create the file inside the folder that we've just dragged inside VS Code. So if we say my second HTML file dot HTML we will have our HTML file. If I go into my HTML page you see that there is my second HTML file. Let me delete that for now. In order to get started we won't write doc type and everything. What we will do, we will just write HTML, column 5, and hit enter. And that creates our HTML skeleton magically for us. Let's talk about the things that we haven't seen in our previous video. First, let's start with the HTML attribute lang equal en which means that our website will be in English. And then we have char set equal UTF-8. This tells the browser to use the UTF-8 character encoding. HTML cannot encode different parts of the website differently, but UTF-8 can support many languages, so that's why we use it. By the way, if you remove this element, it's fine because the default encoding is UTF-8. If you want to know more about that, there is a blog post on there, so feel free to check it out. And then let's talk about viewport for now. Viewport with the content width equal device width tells the browser that 100% of the width of a page is equal to the width of a device. So this is to make it mobile optimized. And initial scale equal one is the zoom level when the page is first loaded. And then now let's talk about this HTTP equiv. This is to support 
old browsers and we basically don't need this anymore so let's delete it. Okay so we have this title element inside our head element. Let's replace it with um, my HTML and then save it and let's add an h1 inside a body. We will add some text inside and in order to view our HTML file, we just need to open the file. So let's click on HTML file from here. As you can see, here is our title and here is the H1. So if we want to update our HTML, let me put this aside for now. And let's add a paragraph and add lorem. If we save it and then refresh the browser, there we have our paragraph. But there is a better way of doing this, okay? So let me show you. Let's open extensions and then we need to install live server. So we will have to find live server here, here it is, and we just need to install it. What you need to do is just right click on the HTML file and click on open live server. And then our file will be opened in here. And look at this. If I add something here, like say another paragraph with another lorem, enter and save it, it's automatically updated. How great is that? Okay, so now let's put more content inside a page. Okay, let's, let's add an article. Inside the article, we, need, we will put an H2. What will we put in the H2? The magic is that there is no magic. Start where you are and don't stop. Let's save that. Ah, there is our A heading. Now let's add a paragraph with a lorem inside. Let's save it. It automatically updates the content. Look at this. Do you know that this is called a responsive website? No, seriously, this is a responsive. Look, look at this. If I resize the window, the content gets resized to, adjusted to the width of uh, the browser. Now let's add an image, okay? Let's say IMG. So we need an image here. So let me copy my image. This is my image. And in order to put it in my HTML file, I need to put dot slash and Calgline here. And then if I save, it's automatically put in here. But there's a problem, okay? So the problem is that the width of our image is more than our browser's width. So to fix that, we just need to add the width attribute to image. And let's say 200 pixel. If we save it, there we go, our image got resized. We can do better, okay? Let's try 100%. There you go, now our, our image is the same size as the browser width. So let me explain to you what is happening here. By default, the image will display at its original resolution. But we can fix that with the width attribute. And what we say here, 100% refers to its container's width. Now let's change it to 300 pixels for now. There we go, so that we can see other content as well. By the way, we can replace this SRC with a URL. This photo is from Unsplash, so if I copy the link from Unsplash and paste it here, as you can see, nothing happens because it's the same image. 
Let's add another paragraph element below. What would we write in this? So let's say uh, we can freely use images from Unsplash and we want this Unsplash to, to, to be a link to Unsplash's website. So in order to do that, let me cut this and put A as anchor. And then in href, I need to put the link to Unsplash unsplash.com and here I will say unsplash let's save and there we go now we can click on we can freely use images from unsplash we can click here and we open unsplash let's come back to our website for now and what if we wanted to open unsplash in another tab rather than in our current tabs content so in order to do that, we just need to add the attribute target and then underscore blank. If we save it and then click on the link, we have Unsplash opened in another tab. Let's close that for now. So that's all great. Now let me show you another way of writing HTML and sharing it at the same time with CodePen. First, what you need to do is open codepen.io. So you will need to sign up if you haven't signed up yet. After that, you will need to log in. And what you need to do is click on the profile picture and then create new pen. And here we are welcomed with our wonderful code editor without installing anything. So what goes inside HTML here is what's inside the body. So if we copy what we've written here and paste it here, we have a content. How wonderful is that? Awesome. That was a great achievement. Okay, so you need to try it. And I'm going to share this pen in the description so you can check it out. And I invite you to write some HTML as well and share it in the comment below. We can all learn from one another. I'm gonna stop here. I'll catch you up in the next video. See ya.